I think. Yeah? Wow, well, that's a lot of noise. Yeah. Who is in the noisy place? <laughs> yeah, that's Samir. He's not in a noisy place, but he must have a noisy audio connection. So, Samir, I just muted you, and I'm sorry. But there it is. That's the way it has to be. <laughs> All right, Dries, are you ready to go? I am, yeah. I don't even know what's happening anymore. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Um, this is the, are we recording? Yep. We are, great. Uh, we have quorum. There's a few people missing today, but we have quorum. Um, the agenda for today is an uh, operational update from Holly, quick uh, reports from the different board committees. That will be two minutes each, and then we're going to talk a little, little bit about uh, the Drupal 8 launch and um, the role that the Drupal Association played in that. And after that, we'll have the executive session. Over to you, Holly. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, what's happening? Let's talk about that. So, operational update. I can do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. Getting the Zoom going was a whole thing today. Um, so the operational update, just a, a few notes um, from the last month, um, some things as we've been getting ready to close out 2015. Um, one big thing of note is, you know, we've had a mandate for the last few years to be able to grow our non DrupalCon revenue. And uh, I'm really excited as we look at our numbers and we're getting close to the end of the year to say that we're definitely on track um, despite all of our sort of financial ups and downs this year. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. The non-con revenue um, definitely is growing, which is great. Um, right now, it's 32% of our total revenue, um, you know, which exceeded our goal of 30%. So that's great uh, that that is happening. And I think it just uh, speaks volumes to the fact that um, even though we really did have a tough time this year, um, we're doing the right things and pulling the right levers to, to be able to um, get towards financial sustainability. Um, and then, of course, I think the big highlight of November, probably everyone's November, was the Drupal 8 release. So um, apparently I was so excited about it, I made it all bold in the packet, um, in the packet text. But yeah, we are really excited about the work that we did around that. Um, and just really grateful for the volunteers um, that we worked with. And we worked with a ton of volunteers, but in, in particular, we worked really closely with Catch and, and Gabor, Paul Johnson, uh, Angie, uh, and Jess. XJM um, to be able to get all the information we needed um, about the release um, and to make the launch go as smoothly as possible. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I've never in my life woken up at 3.30 in the morning for anything. Uh, but I'm really excited to get up at 3.30 in the morning and watch these guys um, and cheer them on um, as we went through the launch process. So it was great. Um, and you can see a lot of the um, excellent work in the, the numbers. So uh, on November 19th, that's the launch date. Um, we had about a 30% spike in traffic overall from the community. It's just showing how excited they were. Um, but just really great engagement with the Drupal 8 um, content. So <clears throat> lots and lots of great stuff going on there. Um, I think uh, the, the Twitter work in particular was kind of amazing. We had more engagement than we had actual followers of the handle, which is awesome. Um, and I think like the time on site um, and um, uh, pages per session, just showing that people were coming in to look at that content and then sticking around it is really wonderful stuff. So it was a great day. So those were really big highlights. Um, a couple of things that we're still keeping our eye on, the, the membership campaign is definitely one of them. Um, we just launched on Monday a revamp of the creative for the membership campaign. So there's a new banner um, and also um, a block up on the homepage of Drupal.org um, talking about membership. Um, on the anecdotal side, people are really excited to see that. It actually features real members and their stories. Um, and that's been really great uh, because we've heard from a lot of people that they're getting like congratulations for being featured on the site, which is awesome. Um, and more importantly, it did a lot to bump up the numbers. So um, 
where we stand right now is at 3,490 memberships. There's been 710 sold during this campaign. Um, and the total dollar amount is uh, right around $40,000 right now. So our goal was 1,000 memberships and uh, $100,000 of revenue. So we're still far off, but we have a nice bump here for the last couple of weeks um, of the campaign. So um, it's the first time we've done it, and we have learned a lot about um, you know, executing this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So but we're keeping an eye on that. Um, and then uh, performance to budget um, and, you know, financials, we just continue to watch that closely. Um, one piece of good news is that we did hit our adjusted supporting partner goal uh, for the year, and it was significant growth over 2014. So that's great. Um, and we are just really continuing to stay focused on the ISV part of our funding strategy right now have lots of good conversations in the hopper uh, for 2016 um, and are just really looking forward to beginning to rebuild those reserves. So that's sort of where we're at after this month. Any questions from that? Not a specific question about that, but I wanted to tell you I've been on the call since the beginning. I didn't hear any mention of my name. So. Oh, hey, Denise. I don't know why I can't see you. Oh, there you are. Okay, good. All right. I guess moving on. Yeah. So we're going to move on to talk about um, now that that launch is over and we're getting ready to do regularly scheduled point releases. Um, I think we're, we'd like to share a little bit of how, a little bit more dig deeper into how this release went and what we're planning to take away from and execute on those point releases. So Brad, you should be a presenter. You should be able to pull that up. And I need Tatiana too, yeah? I'll make Tatiana a panelist. Is that the, uh, the uh, presentation, Holly? Yeah. I'm going to get there. Brad, are you going to, are you planning to share that? Or talk to I can paste it in the chat if you'd like. It'll stop your oh, right. That's fine. I'm stopping sharing my screen. All right. Sorry, we're still learning this. All right. All righty. Thanks for killing the mute. <clears throat> So what do we want to spend about 10 minutes going through this, Holly, from an agenda standpoint? Okay. 15, yeah. So that in mind, I want to make sure we leave enough time for questions and for pauses in the action. So in terms of just setting a quick agenda for this, this is a run through of the things that with the, the high level and some tactical things that we accomplished as part of the DA release work that we get from the association seat. Uh, and certainly some discussion of, from a conclusion standpoint, things we observed, things we'd like to take forward, thinking about the point release specifically. Uh, so since this went out about a week ago, we'll certainly go through some of the build up to that, talking about the accomplishments and some of their specific examples. But with about 10 or 15 minutes, I want to make sure we reserve enough time to ask and answer questions about the conclusions that we drew from that and how that might inform the things we do next and have that try to be the bulk of our conversation today, if, if that's all right with everybody. So to roll right into things, it's super important. Uh, it's also super important in any retrospective of work done to just pause and have a celebration about the fact that it was actually accomplished. Uh, and so slide one is literally just have that moment to sort of take a deep breath and smile and laugh at a minion who is so happy the shaking is just out of control. <laughs> uh, in terms of just sort of the overall summary of what our role was as an association, You'll notice that we don't sort of list out people's roles and things by name. That's intentional. Uh, there were certainly people who were directly involved with the D8 release and others who were not directly involved. But given how much even the people not directly involved had to do and take responsibility on and other roles of things just to make things possible for those of us who were directly involved, uh, basically the answer is everybody had a hand in this. And so from an overall standpoint, our role was to offer some support to offer some coordination. And while 
no one was surprised that D8 was being released when it was. The prime timeline for when all of this came together was basically within about a four week window. So as we talk about things, we're focused on what happened in that T minus four weeks. We're not really talking about the whole build up to the release over a number of years. In terms of the volunteers roles, we wanted to call out a handful of people specifically for their subject matter expertise, for their help translation with translation, and for their help with social media. Uh, and so that's the thank yous that are on the side. There are five people specifically we wanted to make sure, based on how they interacted with us in our Slack channel, where we did a lot of coordination back and forth via email to make sure all of these different pieces of things came together on the timelines that we had planned. And so. Thank you to Ketch, to Gabor, to Paul, to Angie, to Jess, uh, in a number of different ways, whether it was editing documents or it was suggestions about process or it was literally leading an initiative, uh, would have just been impossible from an association standpoint without some of the really critical help that came from them. So to talk a little bit in detail about what the plan actually was, this is just a reminder, a lot of it should look familiar. There were some overarching communication themes. Effectively, as a comm team, wanted to make sure that there was a story that we were weaving together here. And so those themes that should, should appear evident from things you've seen in the board packet before, things like just the literal awareness announcement that Drupal 8 is actually here and available, for example, but also making sure that that story included things like talking about what people are doing with it right now or making it possible for people to find out what people are doing with it right now. Uh, and certainly also, for example, inviting people to try Drupal 8 uh, as soon as they could. And that coordinates with downloads. It also coordinates or corresponds to the Try Drupal program. But these were the seven communication themes that were the framework of the work we did leading up to the release and leading past that. From, am I muted? No, you're good. But no, we can't We're hear just trying it. to make sure that we can yeah. hear the people. You have a microphone, and there's also one here. Because of the way the share was going, oh. you were coming over both, and it was creating an echo. So I had Holly mute this one. So that, that's a shame. OK. Can you hear the people? We can't hear it. Yeah, we can hear them. Yeah. Oh, OK. Software fun. Software hardware fun, yeah. So apologies for the echo that might have been coming through there. We'll try to speak with just one voice from this point forward. Uh, from a, a, another angle from the goals perspective, we had some specific engagement actions that aligned with the story that we wanted to tell, right? So yes, these are the themes that we wanted to get out, but how are we actually going to think about whether those themes were being received and how they were being received? And so examples like, experiencing the content that we actually put on drupal.org in the d8 section or people actually going to try drupal or media mentions of the moment and of the content that we were sharing all of these things are the kind of engagement actions that we were looking for as triggers that we would then set up against these actions metrics to actually get into the details of how well these actions played out but it was important to not just have this great story that we thought was interesting, but also have a way to start whittling that down into stuff that we could measure and use. And so that next slide, this one, is about some of those metrics, pairing them up with those engagement actions. So for example, uh, an engagement action would be people were planning, announcing, and attending release parties. It was important for us to be able to look at, as an example, the number of parties that were actually uh, being planned and scheduled and displayed on groups and on Drupal. And of course, some of not just planning, but actually had to do things. And so the things that we were planning, this includes some of the tactics on Drupal.org, but it also includes tactics across some of the other sites within the suite. Drupal.org was the focus as a communications perspective, and in a lot of ways, uh, a lot of focus from an engineering standpoint, too. Uh, and so the things that you see on this list are not one team versus another. There's a lot of overlap on getting some of these things out the door. So while the press release may have been, from a drafting standpoint, a communications initiative, making the translations possible definitely needed engineering support. It also, for instance, needed community support just to offer the translations and leadership from Gabor to make sure that all of that stuff was 
getting translated by the community and getting to us so that we could get it in and make sure it was displayed for people. So any one of these things had hands from a few different places to make it possible. But these were the list of plan tactics that we had going out at a, as, in terms of like the primary tactics. There were, there were some smaller things, but these were the big picture ones. As you can see in the bottom right hand corner, a couple of things didn't make the cut. That's just the reality. It would have been lovely to pull together a product video and it would have been lovely to pull together a series of sort of asking the experts, the people who had been involved with making Drupal 8 possible, the leading contributors before launch. Uh, but that just didn't happen. And so just wanted to make sure that was clear. It would have been great, but we acknowledge that that didn't get out the door. For tactics that were throughout the rest of the suite of sites, so whether you looked at ADO, the association site, or API, or events, you sort of name it, we, we did have some big picture ideas to make sure that there was coordination across the suite of sites for Drupal.org, so it wasn't just a huge explosion on Drupal.org, and then the other sites were not keeping up in their appropriate ways and in their appropriate context. <clears throat> And so to break that actually into accomplishments, the summary is actually really great. Uh, from a story standpoint, all the communication themes were hit. There was at least one piece of content or one initiative or one communication that checked up all those things, that checked out something on that list. Similar story for the engagement actions. We were able to measure and witness all engagement actions happening throughout that list that we put together. Uh, and from a tactical standpoint, we hit on about 90% plus of our plan tactics. So everything that we laid out as something that we wanted to do big picture wise, really successful in making sure that those got done, uh, even though we were primarily focused in a, on a four week period of time. <clears throat> Call out a couple of those things that were super visual and also obviously have some function woven into them, of course. Uh, but some of the really big hitters in those tactical wins would be, of course, the Drupal 8 content, the redesign of that landing page and its sub pages that follow, and also the change to the header that is a, a site wide experience. These are two of the bigger, more visible things that everybody sort of clutched onto and enjoyed and was able to identify with the release itself. A lot of the other things we did, they weren't necessarily banner items not to by any means step on their importance, but these were super visible and everybody seemed to rally around these and that was great. And so just to sort of refresh that tactical list, that 90% is because just about everything we checked off, that product video would have been lovely, the Ask the Expert series would have been lovely. It is something that we're still in the process of dealing with in a long tail standpoint, but in terms of up to the launch, really hit on all cylinders. Holly had talked about numbers for a little bit, so I won't go through too many more of these, but from an engagement standpoint, a lot of really good numbers. It was not Drupal.org's best recorded day from a Google Analytics standpoint, uh, but a lot of really great peaks here and a lot of indication, as Holly put it, that once people were getting to the site, it wasn't just to have the singular moment about the announcement, it was to actually spend some time and do some other things and that they were starting to find paths and get to other areas of things. And that's really great that it sprouted uh, some integrated experiences. It's a really great sign. And also that from a referral standpoint, it wasn't just people getting here sort of organically, that as you can see with the Twitter and the Facebook referrals, for instance, that the effort specifically to get focus here uh, were working as well. Also want to call out some numbers on the translations. It's pretty awesome that the press release was translated into 31 languages and that the landing page was translated into 33. I think that in and of itself, uh, engagement statistics aside, just that as an accomplishment is a pretty great thing. Also, we learned how to say Twitter in a lot of languages and that was fun. Twitter in a lot of languages. <laughs> yeah, learned how to say Twitter in a lot of languages. Also the reminder as we go forward that we'll probably need to think about some alternatives to Twitter for China, but <laughs> won't get too granular into that right now. Just, you know, we are filing that away as an, oh yeah, blocked in China. Uh, to call out some of the specific social media initiatives, the Celebrate D8 work led by the Celebrate D8 team and specifically by Paul Johnson was just quite incredible. Um, 
I think the emotional connection that it generated, the buzz that that led to was certainly evident for everyone who was paying attention on the 19th and in the days thereafter. But we did want to call out some numbers on that. That 163% engagement rate, in other words, that more people were engaging with that content than were even followers of the Celebrate uh, D8 Twitter handle is pretty incredible. And as we'll talk about on the, just very briefly on the next slide, considering that brands get engagement rates on tweets that's literally less than 1% on average, and that's for the top 25 of brands, to see a number like 163% uh, is, is astronomical. Uh, and even to see that 5.2% engagement versus impression rate, meaning of the people that were actually reached by anything that was tweeted from Celebrate D8, how many of them engaged with it? To see that 5.2 even above the industry standard for the leading brands is pretty great too. And so an extension of that conversation uh, from the Drupal handle, some really great engagement numbers. And again, that stat about for the top 25 brands, your average per tweet engagement, significantly less than the numbers that were going out for us on the 19th. And so again, a thanks to Paul. Lots of parties all over the place, all sorts of people, all sorts of celebrations. Uh, I think it kind of speaks for itself. If we could throw in confetti, we would. Wanted to call out some one other thing that went really, really great during the release, and that was the collaborative effort between uh, volunteers and the association using a channel in our slack implementation being able to have instant access to the people making decisions and also even if people were not particularly decision makers being able to get their insight when we needed it during our decision making processes uh was just invaluable and so not having to do that via email, not especially with people in different time zones, being able to get that kind of coordination in, in often real time uh, really made sure that a lot of the work that went out was getting as close to consensus among a lot of really important, from a lot of really important people as possible. A lot of shared perspectives by making sure that every conversation was as open as we could make it uh, without, of course, leaving everything up to vote or something like that. And so I do want to pause just for a moment before jumping into the lessons and the things we're going to think about going forward to see if there were any questions quickly about the accomplishments. Feel free to also share sort of your favorite moment from the launch. So we can think about those as we plan for the future too. I have no questions, but I, um, I thought you guys did an excellent job from you know, from the social media campaign, which I thought was amazing, to the parties, which was mind blowing that there's so many, to the website and the design. I think this was our best design work ever, in my opinion. I don't know if we did the design, but I really liked it personally. Um, yeah, to the translations, I think I think this is definitely our best release ever, and not a little bit of progress, but a lot of a lot of um, a lot of progress in how we do things so yeah no. i don't know how to make that stop <laughs> um uh outside of piercing your eardrums i would also like to say <laughs> that um uh emily Nemo from our team led the design effort um and i think one of the reasons it was really good not only she talented and, and awesome but one of the reasons it was really good was because Brad and Emily worked so closely together on the story that they were trying to tell, and those were, I think, the 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 words and the and the design were so closely integrated that it really helped it be successful together. Yeah, I mean, I guess the only the only thing I think we could probably try to do better, but I don't know what we try to do is more, um, less, you know, more. Um, how do we get it more like how do we get more magazines or media sites or you know web, websites well not websites websites about web development right. um, to pick up um, you know, to pick up the release and help us get broader reach I don't know if we have an overview of who picked it up from a from a from that point of view but I felt it was maybe limited 
Yeah. Oh, I hear Maybe I, some paid content opportunities, like VentureBeat does a lot of that. Some other ones, and then um, and then they got that gets picked up by other tech. I reached out to um, Rowan Pierce, who an Australian tech journal who's done a lot of coverage of Drupal um, over the years, and he's interviewed you, Dries, and he's interviewed Angie, and he did a, a coverage. But yeah, I, I agree. If that's something that we can look at, is how we actually get some of that tech press coverage. Um, all of the other stuff was so awesome. Congratulations, everybody. Yeah, I agree. I, I, you know, it was more of a side note. And I recognize it's hard to get coverage when you, you know, announce betas and release candidates, and then you announce the date of the release ahead of time. And, like, I think it takes away a lot of the, you know, the, 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 <laughs> sort of the surprise, I guess, or the magic. So. I think everybody's muted now. How about now? Can you, you hear me now without an echo? Yes. Yes. Good. All right, I got the thumbs up. Uh, yeah, definitely the media mention aspect of things is something that for us, we would like to improve a little bit the next time. There are a couple of reasons that just sort of stand out. One, I think yeah, the idea of there being staggered dates and trying to pick the one out of the series of dates that's most important to draw attention to. But I think we could just be more active over a longer term of creating those relationships and having a great list of people to go to and not trying to drum that up within four days kind of thing. Um, in terms of the just the numbers on mentions, I, we were tracking that over uh, the first week or so and then with the first 24 hour period there probably was a few dozen media mentions but fairly enough to them and not to be disparaging of those outlets they weren't the outlets we would probably want them to be right so i, I do think that speaks to starting the process of creating these relationships so that our requests for attention stand out amongst the sea of requests that these tech blogs get on a daily basis um and so to to segue into the, the lessons a little bit, uh, because you know things are done, but they're not perfect. And certainly to stand on the shoulders of Larry's recent post about being happy but not satisfied, uh, we incurred some technical debt getting a lot of these things out, in part because of the short time frame, uh, in part because of the nature of the things that we were doing. But there is definitely some cleanup going on on the other side of the release. Uh, from a decision-making standpoint, our decisions were informed. We were educated, everybody's experienced and has great perspective to bring to the table, not just within the association, but also uh, volunteering to help with us. But not everything was research-based, perhaps, in the way that it should have been. So, for instance, in terms of determining exactly what content to put in what places, on what channel, at what time, like when we have information on when the release is going to go out, but did we have a sense of the best time to tweet about the release to make sure that it was getting the most exposure? There was some really good work done by Paul in the Celebrate D8 standpoint to make sure that the wave of celebrations continued, but I think we could have used more research to, do, to handle some of the other communications that were pushed out. Uh, I think we could certainly offer more visibility into the work that we were doing. We had a lot of planning and a lot of logistics going on here, but I can certainly see that some of that might not have been particularly obvious to people that weren't caught up in the internal energy that we had here. And we'll have to figure out what the best way to do that is, the best way to present information so that people have what they need to know and what they want to find out without overwhelming them with way too many logistics or that kind of thing. Um, and the other thing that we certainly wanted to work on finding consensus about what the release's major themes should be. So we had communication themes in terms of telling a story about the release, but it wasn't always 100% clear what the story about Drupal 8 should be. So for instance, whether it was while we were writing a press release or copy for a landing page, 
we were having discussions about whether Drupal should be called a content management system or a content management platform or an experience framework. And those are very valid conversations and the opinion shared about them were all equally great too. But in terms of like a communication and a release output, uh, probably not the time that we should be trying to figure that out. We need to probably figure that out before we're four days before the press release has to be done kind of thing. And so in terms of things that are opportunities coming out of that, we see opportunity for a clear repeatable process and we are starting to work on that for the point releases. We see that this is an opportunity for really extensive marketing, uh, that the impact that this has is is certainly in allowing the community to celebrate the job done, the work done, the contributions made. Uh, but there's certainly a lot of room for outreach and talking to people and having conversations with people who are not already within the community or who don't consider themselves to be. And so as we think about these releases in the future, perhaps not so much the point ones, but in the full releases, realizing that there's a great opportunity to have really big conversations about Drupal whenever something like this happens. Um, Certainly there are a lot of competing priorities and we're going to need to make sure that we prioritize those having had this experience with a better understanding of in which order things should happen to make sure uh, that things like maybe the product video doesn't slip through the cracks, for instance. And then also that delegation to specialists can have great value. This was proved over and over and over again that the work from the select number of volunteers, but also from a broader range of people uh, community members who have great backgrounds and great experience doing specific things, working closely with them on those things as opposed to trying to have the association do every little bit of an idea has great value. Headed towards the future to sort of talk about how those lessons are going to inform the things we would like to do next. We definitely think there's room for super clear cross-discipline process. Uh, that's speaking more to us internally. That's not a reflection of an opinion about the community, just to be clear. But now that we realize as this team, the things that we want to do for releases, we can do a lot to make sure that things are happening in really clear cross-discipline ways, that if the engineering team needs X and the communication team needs Y, that we find places, ways to make all of that happen easily. Um, and just get rid of some of the first time struggle kind of things. Uh, that said, we still do want predictable and repeatable processes for the point release, and that is something that we're starting. So for instance, as we get into the turn of the year and 8.1's development cycle begins, we'll soon thereafter start discussions with uh, maintainers to make sure we're aware of the things that are probably going to be priorities for 8.1 so that we're not waiting as an association for let's say April 1st to start putting together our plans for what needs to happen on April 20th. Uh, that we don't wanna rush people, but as much as we can know, as soon as we can know it, we think we can probably do our own work a bunch of good and also help others in the community where they need it. We do think we'll probably have smaller scope of work though for the point releases in terms of the communication and design work and certainly from an engineering standpoint too. Uh, that part of predictable process is also cutting out some of the fat. That said, the nature of a point release in almost every case is going to be that it's not the hoopla for obvious reasons that the full will be. So we're going to take that into account when we consider what the plan is. Um, and we mentioned project management transparency is something I really want to call out from here too. Uh, just making sure that when we set plans and we set goals that we're making sure that those are available <coughs> to you as the board and also to the community broadly so that if someone's wondering, hey, I have this great idea about remixing logos for the release that they're aware that we're thinking about that too. And so the last slide here, um, as we think about the point releases specifically, uh, we do want to make sure that any canonical Drupal 8 content that exists right now, so like the landing page, it's sub pages, FAQ, et cetera, those things are refreshed to be appropriate for whatever the point release requires. Um, if necessary, we do want to be prepared to create release specific content that will be feature dependent. So we don't have a firm plan on that right now because that is feature driven. Uh, we certainly want to run social campaigns around that content and be very strategic about which platforms we choose to do that. 
And again, we want to go through helping coordinate translations of the material that we push out and making sure uh, that we coordinate tri Drupal updates as well. That's important as a revenue opportunity for the association to make sure that if 8.1 is going to be available on Drupal.org, that the, the partners participating in that program have the opportunity and the heads up to, to be prepared for that as well. And with that, we're through the list of things. <clears throat> Hold on. Okay. I think our dance of microphone muting is complete. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Oh. Awesome. I think it's, uh, it's, it's impressive. I think it's good. I don't know if there's any questions, though. I don't have any questions. I don't see any in the chat. Anyone else want to pipe up? Uh, I just want to say that it was amazing watching watching it through the day, how things proceeded, and the parties, and all of that. I think that the coordination across, um, uh, you know, from the from the association across volunteers in the in the community, was spot on, fabulous, and uh, congratulations all. I think it's great. Yeah, we should probably give a shout out to the folks at Drupal also for. Um, finding a way for us to display the Drupal 8 parties on, on their platform so that we didn't have to try to make one. Um, and that I thought was a really great, it was a great thing to see um, all of those in conjunction with all the other Drupal events that were going on in the world. So it was great to have that. I was ridiculously excited by Drupal Cal. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, I usually have like four or five tabs that stay open every day that get refreshed a lot, and that was one of them for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Fun to watch the parties roll in. Okay, well, it sounds like that is it. Right. Do we want to do board committees, or was it all? I didn't see it in the uh, in the board package. Maybe I'm wrong. Right, my brain skipped right past those because I forgot to ask people for updates, but I also think that no one met this month, including the finance committee, uh, yesterday because of some travel and illness. Uh, yeah, okay, so nobody met. Yep. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Hi there. <laughs> Sorry, hey. I've, been, I've, I've been fighting with my phone to get back to where I could talk to you. Um, so I, this is about the previous topic, and I'm sorry it took me so long to get unmuted. But um, I wanted to say I've been through a lot of launches from different open source communities, and I actually think this one was one of the better handled that I've seen. Um, that I've seen the, the hype go too far overboard, like Mozilla has done occasionally. I don't think that happened. Um, and I think everybody you know, had an opportunity to, to think that it was um, a great milestone and to put focus on the, on the technology. And I think the community worked really well together. So uh, I also watched it with, uh, with a lot of happiness for, for the Drupal Foundation and, and uh, the project generally. Anyway. Thanks, Denise. <clears throat> All right, any other thoughts, questions? If not, we can probably wrap up the um, public part of the board meeting. Nothing? All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, if I don't get to talk to you anymore, have a happy holidays. Take a little break. Enjoy the, you know, enjoy the, uh, the holidays if you celebrate them, and we'll see each other in the new year. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Board members, you can just stay put. Uh, okay. And we'll clear everyone out.